The Buddha's basic teachings on mindfulness focus on two activities. The first is keeping focused on the body or feelings or mind or mental qualities in and of themselves. And the second is putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. You need both activities to get the mind into concentration. The first is the actual concentration. For instance, you're keeping focused on the breath in and of itself, i.e., without making reference to anything else. Just the experience of the breath right here, right now. And then the second activity protects that. If you find that the mind is wandering off into issues out in the world apart from your frame of reference, you've got to learn how to subdue, as the Buddha said, or put aside any interest in the world outside right now. So it's a double activity to get the mind settled down, especially in the first stages, because if you've been out in the world thinking about the world, it's very hard to put all that aside. The world of the media, the world of your work, the world of your family, it all gets very real and gets reinforced all the time. And now you're trying to unreinforce it to pull out of that framework, and it's going to take a while. It's good to have some reflections to help you when the mind wanders out away from the breath. Reflections that help direct you back in. The first one is that whatever's going to happen in the world, you have no idea. But you do know that whatever comes up, you're going to need a lot of inner wealth, like the mindfulness you're developing right now, the alertness, the concentration, the discernment. These things will stand you in good stead no matter what. So put those thoughts up as a fence. And secondly, you want to develop some good qualities in the mind, because the more your wealth is inside, then the less you have to worry about outside. This doesn't mean that you're not concerned with the outside at all, but simply realizing you've got some safe wealth in here. It's like knowing you've got Switzerland inside. No matter what the Germans or the French or the Italians do, there's always Switzerland. And so what is this wealth, this inner wealth? The Buddha lists seven qualities in all. The first four go together. Conviction, virtue, a sense of shame, and a sense of compunction. The conviction is basically conviction in the Buddha's awakening. But what does that mean in practical terms? It means con being convinced in the power of your actions. He was able to find true happiness through his own actions. And the qualities that he developed are qualities that everybody has in potential form. So you have it within you, in terms of your heedfulness, your resolve, your ardency. You can do it too. But it also means that you're alert to the fact that your actions really make a huge difference in your life. In other words, their quality doesn't have to be measured by how much impact you have out in the world, but it's very much measured by the quality, the intention that goes into the action. The more skillful the intention, the better the results are going to be. So this points you back to the mind again. You want to be right here, right now, to see clearly what's going on. And to be very frank with yourself, if something unskillful is going on, you want to be able to Hold it in check. That's what the qualities of virtue, shame, and compunction are for. Virtue is basically refraining from doing anything that would be harmful. And that's reinforced by a sense of shame. Not the unhealthy sense of shame, which is the opposite of pride. It's the healthy sense of shame, which is the opposite of shamelessness. In other words, you have a sense of honor, you have a sense of your dignity as a person, and your value as a person, then you realize there are certain actions that are beneath you. And that protects you. It goes together with compunction, which is the realization that unskillful actions are going to have 
bad consequences down the line, and you really do want to avoid those. You're not apathetic. A lot of people say, well, I'll just do what I want and let the chips fall where they may. Well, that's not compunction. Compunction is very careful about where those chips fall. You don't want them to fall in any way that hurts you or hurts anybody else. So these two qualities work together to make sure that your virtue is solid. As the texts say, both when other people are looking and when other people are not looking. You want to make sure you stick with your, your principles, that you don't want to harm anybody. Because after all, what kind of happiness can you get that will be lasting if it's based on harming somebody else? You want happiness that's blameless, because that's a happiness that lasts. So it's for your own good that you are making sure that you're not harmful to other people. And the more you can d develop these qualities inside, the richer your mind will be. The other three treasures are generosity, learning, and discernment. Generosity is the side of the mind that doesn't just avoid doing harm, but actually wants to do good and wants to help. And it's based on the realization that some of the things you have are more than you need, and you can actually share them. And this doesn't refer only to material things although it does refer to material things, partly. But it also refers to your generosity, your willingness to share your knowledge, your willingness to share your time, your willingness to share your strength, your willingness to share your forgiveness. A mind that has these qualities is a spacious mind. It's like having a very large house for all your inner wealth. In fact, the Buddha said, without generosity, if you really are stingy, there's no way you're going to get the mind into good solid concentration. Or if it is in solid concentration, it's not going to be for your own good. It's going to be the kind of concentration that gets focused on all the wrong things. So you want to make a daily practice of being generous. And the fact that you realize you've got this to share, that to share, it does give a sense of wealth inside. The people who have a lot of things, but they're afraid to share, they're afraid they're going to lose what they got, they're very poor. All they can see is lack, lack, lack. But here you are, creating abundance from within. Now all of this is directed by learning and discernment. The learning here is learning the Dharma. Reading up, listening, thinking about the Dharma. So when things get difficult, you'll have something to fall back on. We have so much garbage in our heads. Think about how many hours of advertisements we've seen or heard in the course of a lifetime, and how this stuff kind of reverberates around. You want to have something better to, to call on, something better that will come into your mind. I know someone who went down to Mexico one time to study Spanish with a group of teenagers. And their hosts held a party and they sang Mexican folk songs for them, and then they turned to the Americans and said, okay, could you sing some American folk songs? And the Americans looked at one another, and all they could think of was Gilligan's Island. That's the kind of garbage that's going around in our heads. So it's good to memorize some chants, good to memorize some passages of Dharma. So it fits in with the rhythm of your blood and the rhythm of your walking, the rhythm of your thinking. These things will show themselves when you need them. This is one of the ways in which we develop mindfulness, realizing that we have lessons from the past that we've learned, and we want to make sure that we remember the right things that are appropriate. And then we use our discernment to apply them. And at the same time, develop our ingenuity, because there'll be a lot of things that we can't learn in books. As I would have said, to be all around wise, you need to know not only the Dharma, but also its meaning. And beyond that, you need to have a sense of yourself, you need to have a sense of the right time and place, you need to have a sense of enough in terms of food, sleep, conversation, 
how much is enough, how much is too much. You know, you have a sense of groups of people and how you can relate to them. And where do you learn these things? You learn by being observant. You could hear the principle say of eating in moderation or sleeping in moderation. Well, how much is that? You have to try. And having a sense of yourself means knowing where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are. And you don't know those until you've actually put yourself to the test, sat down to meditate. Practice generosity, practice virtue. So wisdom here is not just a matter of having learned things from other people. It's, it's learning how to use what you've learned wisely. And at the same time, take those principles and apply them in a creative way, using your ingenuity to figure out what they actually mean. When you have these qualities of mind, then you're wealthy inside. In Thai they have a phrase, being poor-minded means getting to a point where you don't know what to do. You've run out of options. But when you've got this kind of wealth inside, you'll never be poor-minded. You'll have lots of options to draw on. Things you've learned, things you're, the ability to come up with new solutions when what you've learned doesn't seem quite to apply. The fact that you're generous and virtuous. All these treasures will enable you to deal with whatever comes up. And so when you have this sense of inner wealth like this, then your concern about the world outside begins to pale. That actually makes you more courageous in dealing with the world outside, too, because you realize that things outside, even though you may have some treasures out there as well, those aren't the real ones. The real treasures you've got are the ones inside that nobody can touch. And so what you give outside, that's it's just the shadow of your virtue, the virtue and your generosity. Those are things, the real things are inside. So when you can think in these ways, the question of greed and distress with reference to the world gets a lot weaker. What you should be distressed about is if you don't have these treasures inside, work on those. And being greedy for these treasures is no problem. This is one area where the Buddha doesn't call it greed, he calls it initiative. This kind of wealth, the more you take, the better. And so where do you find that wealth? By staying focused on the breath in and of itself. Staying focused on the feelings around the breath in and of themselves. Staying focused on the mind as it relates to the breath in and of itself. In other words, in and everything in and of itself right here. That's where the wealth will be found. So let those thoughts be a fence to protect your inner wealth and to help you stay focused on where your real treasures lie.